In a recent fishing video, I talked about Berkeley Nanofill, and in that video, I mentioned the fact that I was going to be doing more fishing line videos in the future. Well, my friends, today we are fishing with Daiwa J Braid. This is an eight strand braid, and this is in six pound test. I've got it spooled up right here. We've got a little micro drop shot on, and I'm about ready to take out my kayak and try to catch some fish. So throughout today's video, I'm basically gonna talk about what I like and don't like, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to wrap it up and basically tell you if it's a good option for you. And I can tell you right now, it's a great braid, it's a great option, and I highly recommend it. But let's talk about it and let's go catch some fish. Let's go. First trip in the solo canoe this year. I miss this kayak. This is a great little boat right here. I just called it a kayak, a canoe, and a boat, all in one sentence. It's pretty impressive. So today I'm going to be starting with a micro drop shot. You know, I've been meaning to fish with this rig for a while and I decided now that we're getting a little bit warmer water, let's drag this puppy around. So I've got this same J-Braid rigged up on a couple of my ultralights and I've been using it for the last few months. And so I really feel like I've got a pretty good idea of how it performs. And so far I'm just nothing but impressed. I've fished with several different braids in my day and I can tell you that most of them are pretty good. There's no, nothing wrong with most braids on the market, but some of them just have a little bit different feel. And I can tell you that J-Braid has a really good feel to it. It's very, very like supple. It's very, very smooth. Um, it's kind of like, it's just a nice feeling braid. It's hard to explain, but some of them get to be a little bit wiry. And if you like push on it, it'll like, it'll have like a memory. But J braid I find has zero memory whatsoever. And that's really the biggest thing with braid, I would say. You know, the other things that you wanna look out for are like wind knots and whatnot. But I would say that wind knots are gonna happen no matter what braid you use. But what I've found with this, it, I just gotta miss, short strike. Um, what I found with this J braid is that I have no more wind knots than any other braid. I, if anything, I haven't really experienced very many at all. I would have expected a high quality braid from Daiwa to be pretty expensive, but I was surprised at the fact that I would say it's very competitive in price, which is obviously a huge you know, part of the value when it comes to picking out a fishing line. Fishing line can get very expensive if you don't get the right type. And uh, for the price, this is incredible. As much as I love the drop shot, I just don't think it's the play right now. I don't think these fish are deep enough to need a drop shot. So I'm gonna try something that's better for the shallows. We're gonna try an absolute classic, little uh, Rebel Crick Hopper here. Got a little bill on it, it dives down. You can fish it like a jerk bait, you can fish it like a topwater, you can fish it like a crankbait. Awesome little bait and super inexpensive too, so. There's one, smoked it. He had to have been in like six inches of water. Little tiny bass, but I'll take it. I'll take it. I knew that this thing was gonna get eaten. There's too much activity in the shallows right now. Doesn't seem like there's any fish off deep just yet. It's just not quite warm enough yet. It seems like all the fish are either in the process of spawning or right around the spawn. And there you have it, we're on the board. Little dinky bass. I'm just using a seven foot ultralight right now. It's a temple fork. I've got the line spooled up on a Daiwa Legalis uh, 2000. And I gotta say, I can cast a lot of super lightweights with it. One of the big watch outs with braid, I would say, um, in my experience, I would say that generally speaking, low diameter lines cast light weights the best. But when it comes to braid, I've found that anything under 132nd ounce just gets to the point where it doesn't do quite as well. But what I've noticed with Daiwa J braid is it tends to do better than other braids that I've found. And I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's the fact that it has very little to no memory and the fact that it's so smooth, but I've been able to cast like little 164th ounce jigs quite well with this. So I'm a huge fan. That's a bluegill. That's a bluegill. That's awesome. I just had it sitting there. I had twitched it a couple times and this guy came up and smashed it. Not a big fish, but a topwater fish. So I'm not gonna complain. Two fish, two species, cool. Oh my gosh, it hit the water and one just ate it. It's another little bass. Feisty little fish, man, feisty. Coming right at me. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right, well, we will do our best to catch something bigger than this, but no matter what, I'm having fun with it. Ooh, there you go. Pretty little fish. See ya, buddy. These bushes up here look too good. I gotta fish these bushes. Oh, smashed it. Gah, just a bunch of dinky bass today so far. But I trust the process. Hopefully we can catch some nice panfish along the way too. That is a total dink. Oh gosh, he's barely hooked. Oh gosh. I just don't want that uh, crick hopper to come flying back at me. All right, hey there, buddy. Thank you for eating the little crick hopper. 
fun little bait to fish, my friends. Die with J-Braid, little bass, good times, man. Good times. You know, like I said, there's lots of good braids on the market, so I'm certainly not gonna say that this is hands down the best. It kind of comes down to personal preference, but based on my experience so far, there's been a lot of braids that I've used, and this has been one of the best experiences I've had yet. You know, I've had good success with Power Pro in the past. I've used some Sunline X Plasma, which I liked until the winter time. For some reason, the Sunline X Plasma for me during the winter, it just seemed to have a lot of issues whenever I was fishing cold water. I've used some Berkeley braids, which I'm a little bit, oh my gosh, there's one. I was gonna say, I've used some Berkley braids and I'm a little bit more lukewarm on those. And I'll talk about those in a future video. This is my best bass of the day for sure. Not a big one by any means, but nice one for ultralight. Oof, he's got some dog in him. He's got some dog in him. Poof. All right, careful now, buddy. I really don't want that in my finger. Careful now, buddy. There you go. Nice little ultralight bass right there. I think one of the ones I have high hopes for that I'm getting ready to test, I haven't rigged it up yet, so some point in the next year I might do a video on it, is um, Suffix 832. I've heard really good things about that as well, and I have a spool at home, I just haven't quite spooled it up yet. Nice little chunker. See you, buddy. I think one of the best things about fishing with braid is the fact that if you get the right braid from the start, you can rig it up and fish with it for a long time. I've had reels before. I know that some people are gonna call me crazy for this, but I've had reels before that have probably had the same braid rigged up on them for probably five years. And I know that maybe that's not the recommendation by these companies, but if it lasts, so be it. I think that's so nice. I mean, it's, you know, I know that the sticker shock can be there with some of the braids. You know, you might spend $20 for a spool, $25 for a spool, but the nice thing is that might end up lasting you three, four years. And that is so nice. So if you get the right braid from the start, to me, the value is absolutely there as an angler. And that's really my goal with these line videos. I'm not trying to tell you that you need, you know, 10 different types of line. You ultimately just need one or two, depending on how many setups you have. And uh, for me, I just wanna make sure that I can help guide you into the right line from the start. So that way you don't have a bunch of headaches on the water because I'd say most lines these days are pretty good, but sometimes there's lines that are just not quite as good as others. And you end up buying a spool and you just have issues and that's not fun for anyone. I just had a short strike right there. There's a lot of fish up in the shallows right now. This is fun. Oh, I landed on top of one. <laughs> I literally landed on this fish. I mean, like it literally hit the water and this fish ate. And I believe that is a dinky bass. My goodness, there's a lot of small bass in here. Makes for a good time with the old ultralight, my friends. Makes for a real good time. If I had a fly rod with me, that would have been wild. What the heck is going on right now? The amount of small bass in this lake is starting to get disgusting. I think we might need to keep some of these bass. I'm not gonna lie to you. Try to, uh, weed out some of these dinks so it gives the other ones a chance to grow bigger. A lot of competition in this lake, that's for sure. See you, buddy. I'm not saying I encourage everyone to keep bass all the time, but I am saying that sometimes you get overpopulation just like you do with bluegill sometimes. Look at that, speaking of bluegill, my goodness, that is a freaking fatty. Fatty with a dump truck, holy smokes. Holy smokes, this thing's about to freaking pop. Holy cannoli, it's literally like busting out the seams. So when it comes to fishing braided line on my ultralights, I pretty much always fish a leader. So right now I've just got some four pound monofilament as my leader. And I've found that the leader knots have been completely easy to tie with this. I just do a double uni knot anytime I'm tying a leader with braid and mono. And I've had no issues whatsoever. So I gotta say, it checks out. Um, I'm, you can obviously fish straight braid, but for me, I just have a little bit more confidence when I put on a leader because it cuts down on that visibility and the fish aren't able to see the you know, the line as well. So um, either way, you can definitely fish straight J braid if you want, um, especially if you have dirtier water. But for me, I don't think it's that big of a deal to just go ahead and throw a leader on there and it seems to work quite well. I guess one thing I haven't really talked about yet is why you would want braid in the first place for ultralight fishing. For me, I love braid. If I can get away with it, I'm always gonna choose braid because it obviously has a higher visibility and so many of the bites, as I've mentioned in many videos, so many of the bites you detect with ultralight fishing is through the line, visually seeing it moving. So having that bright green is super nice because if I'm casting a really light jig out there and I don't feel a bite, but I see my line tick, then I know that something just ate it. And that's super critical. The other great thing about braid is the fact that it is no stretch. I mean, it has pretty much zero stretch altogether. 
And so to have zero stretch, that gives you the most sensitivity. It also allows you to bury that hook as soon as a fish bites. Now, the downside to no stretch is like if you're fishing, you know, a lot of trout or something like that, you know, something that you might not necessarily want to just bury that hook right away. You might want them to take it a little bit. Maybe you're throwing a lot of treble hooked baits. Maybe your rod is fast and you have braid. That might get to the point where you're actually pulling the hook out of the fish's mouth more often than not. So I would say that you kind of want to balance your setup. Um, this temple fork rod has enough flex down the backbone to where pairing it up with braid is a great setup. I would say fishing these temple fork rods, you know, you can use mono, you can use whatever you want, but I would say they match perfectly with a nice ultralight braided fishing line. And that's why this setup right here is an incredibly fun to fish with and there we go and i've caught pretty much every fish that's bit i've lost a few but that's kind of just going to happen with treble hooked baits but as you can see this rod's got a nice little flex down the backbone and then that braid has no stretch whatsoever so they match up really really nice if i was using a super super fast rod i'd probably be missing a lot of fish on this treble hooked bait because i'd probably pull the hook out of fish's mouths a lot does it look giant yeah well it's not see ya Okay, this is a good opportunity to rig up a 180th ounce mule jig, and that's gonna really test this line, because if an ultralight line can cast the super, super ultralight stuff, then it gets the nod in my book. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it up to a 180th ounce mule jig, and we're gonna try to do some damage on these bluegills. Okay, first cast was a little wonky, but we got it out there. And first cast equals first fish. I'm telling you, there's a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of bluegill in here, and that's actually a pretty good one pretty solid fish. Looks like there's some nice ones in here. Uh, there you go. Healthy little bluegill right there. Awesome. Beautiful fish. Dang. I'm just going to zing this thing around. I'm just kind of whipping it out there. Um, it's getting out there as long as I could expect. You know, part of it comes down to the rod. Part of it comes down to the line. It's really a system. And uh, if you have the right line in place, but you don't have the right rod, you know, it's not going to do super well. But if you have the right rod and you don't have the right line, it's not going to do super well. But if you have both things that are gonna work well, then you're in good shape. And uh, that's where it's really all about creating a system. And this J braid paired with this temple fork is doing just fine. The temple fork has a soft enough tip to where you can zing out the small stuff. And then the braid, low diameter, it's narrow, it's smooth, and it does well with this light stuff. So I'm actually zinging this out there about, I would say 20, I don't know. I don't know how far I'm getting on this thing. It's gotta be about 20, 25 feet. And uh, generally speaking, the 180th ounce on its own is not gonna cast super, super far. So it's meeting my expectations. I think I could probably get just a little bit more distance with two pound monofilament, but I just, man, I just, I just threw that thing out there a long ways that time. So very, very impressed. As I mentioned, you know, most braids just can't do that. Man, that's a nice gill. I'm glad I rigged up the mule minnow because uh, these are some nice gills. These are some healthy ones. These are the kind of fish that I want in my life right here. It's a beautiful fish, man. They're not absolute bruisers, but they're really healthy ones. All right, see ya, buddy. <laughs> you know, in this wind right now, when I see my line tighten up, I know one's on it, like right there. That fish was carrying it. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. It's hard to beat this right here. That's a beefcake, holy smokes. Look at how fat that bluegill is. Just a beefcake. This wind is kind of creating some chop and uh, with this super lightweight gear, it's hard to kind of feel it down there. So that's why it's like a sensitive rod doesn't do you a whole lot of good. But high visibility line does a lot of good for you. I just watched my line kind of tighten up and that fish had been carrying it and uh, that allowed me to catch that fish. So anytime I look for an ultralight braid, whether that's J braid or Fireline or Power Pro, it doesn't really matter. I pretty much always opt for the high visibility option. I have zero desire to fish with something that's gonna be hard to see because I'm not fishing it straight. If I was fishing straight braid, I may consider like a moss green or something, but at the end of the day, I feel like it makes so much more sense to use a high visibility braid with a leader than it does to use a low visibility braid because it just makes it so much more difficult to you to detect bites. And for me, it's like, if I'm gonna use a low visibility braid, I'd probably actually just rather use straight monofilament it. Oh man, I felt that bite in the line. That was the first one that I just straight up felt in the line, I think. And uh, that's pretty common with braided fishing line. You feel that thump because it's so sensitive. And uh, because this has no memory, this line is able to pick up on those light bites. That was awesome. 
Great testament to this line, but I would say pretty much all braid is extremely sensitive due to the fact that it doesn't stretch at all. But because this has no memory, it obviously puts it in a good position to pick up on those light bites. Because you can see I can just do this right here and it's gonna straighten right back out and it's back to its normal position. And uh, there's some braids that would have a little coil right there if I started twisting on them and doing that sort of stuff. But this always, every time it returns to position. So that is what you wanna look for in a braid. Uh, again, there's some other really great options on the market, but I can say with confidence that this is one of my favorite braids that I've used thus far. There's one, ooh, yellow perch. Well, I wasn't gonna call it a trip until we put a perch in the boat. There we go third species. I just got off the water. I was out there for an hour-ish. I caught a ton of bluegill, ton of bass, had a great time out there, but all in all, the Daiwa J braid was a great option. I gotta be honest with you, I've been fishing with a lot of lines, and this is probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite. So I would say this, if you're going to fish with an ultralight braid, I'd say the six pound J braid is a great option. I don't think you can go wrong. I'm gonna continue to experiment with more in the future, so if you have any suggestions, drop those in the comments below. Otherwise, I'm gonna call it a day. We'll catch you next time.